Oaks Craig here, and today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite video game um, covers or box arts. Um, this isn't every box art that I like, um, mainly because I'm sharing with you specifically games I own, and I don't own every game. And uh, I'm not uh, I'm not putting these like this is not like a top ten or this is not an ordered list. I'm not trying to tell you that these are the best. These are just some that I really enjoy and why. And we'll start off with um, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And uh, I'm a big fan of like foil covers, which the Collector's Edition is. And um, I like this because it's really simple, um, as Zelda covers used to be. It's just um, uh, the name and the Sword and Shield logo. And you can contrast this with um, A Link to the Past, which is very similar. Um, but I think for me, the key difference is the Sword and the Shield, where in Ocarina of Time it's a little less busy. Um, there's a little more, uh, there's a little more color, and if you look here, like, this is, you know, everything here is battle-worn, and that might, that, I mean, some people might be more drawn to this, which is fair, but for me, um, I like the simplicity of the Hillian shield here on the Ocarina of Time cover. I like that a lot. And, on the subject, I mean, of simplicity, uh, so a few simple covers here I really enjoyed. Uh, this is Metal Gear Solid, the original Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1. And for me, this cover is just as iconic as anything else with this game, and uh, it, it's just it's just a, a red a foil red logo on a plain white background, and um, it's fantastic. It's great. Um, there's uh, Metal Gear Solid Two used this uh, the wispy kind of uh, promo art that often goes with Metal Gear Solid games, and that's nice. I like that because I really like this artwork. I really like this this kind of artwork that goes with Metal Gear Solid. But for me, like this is just there, there's something brave about this cover because there's not even there's not even a logo here. It it's literally just the name of the game, and I I think it takes some balls to do that, and I and I like that a lot. A few other simple covers here. I have the collector's edition for Epic Mickey, and I kind of wish this was a little bit simpler. I mean, you know, it's not that I don't have any criticisms, but I wish that the ink from the side of the box didn't spill over to the front. But I I just I love like this this viscous. Mickey Mouse ears that was used as a logo for the game, and I think that just just this logo and just the name Epic Mickey, and that's it on the cover would have been terrific. So it's not perfect, but I, I really like what they were going for with the cover of the collector's edition. I like this a lot. And it's sort of similar to uh, Alan Wake, which um, it's a little bit busier. It's not just a logo. I mean, you got the water, you got the trees, and you got Alan himself as part of the logo. But it's just um, it's very moody, very atmospheric. Uh, quite like the game itself, which I like a lot. And um, <clears throat> I like I like cover art that can convey a lot uh, without a whole lot on there. But you can, can contrast that here with this cover for Earthseeker on the Wii. And this is this is maybe the busiest box art I've ever seen in my life. And I think that's why I like it. I, I like the fact that there's there's just so much happening on the front of this box. And I've I've never seen anything quite like it. There's just a, a great attention to detail, and I really like the art style and the use of color, the muted tones on the cover here. I like that a lot. Um, I also like box arts that can convey a sense of scale. Uh, this is the Japanese version of Illusion of Gaia. And I, I think it would almost work without these characters in the background here, uh, with just the little characters here. But um, still though, I mean, this, this really does have a great sense of scale to it. Uh, I think this is a lot. And as a bonus, this actually has profiles of people who worked on the game on the back. I think that's really awesome. That's really cool. But um, Really cool art. And I think Dragon Warrior 3 on the Game Boy Color does something similar here um, with this sort of, uh, you know, rising shot looking looking from the bottom up, from the ground up, with the clouds over, overhead. It, it really gives you the sense that there's more to the scene than is just uh, on, the, on the front of the box. Uh, there's something, you know, a little bit epic about this, uh, about this box. And I think the same can be said for Legend of Heroes Trails uh, in the Sky on the uh, PSP, particularly this uh, collector's edition here, which is foil, looks nice. But it just it just gives you this, this great sense of scale, that there's a whole world that exists outside of this box art. And it's terrific. And also on the, uh, on the uh, theme of scale, we have here Secret of Evermore, which I think is kind of an iconic cover. And you have this boy and his dog and this giant monster. And it's absolutely terrifying. Look, that's a disgusting monster. And um, 
it, it just, I think this looks great. There's just a great sense of scale and just the insurmountable odds, which I think is really great. And uh, Sin and Punishment Star Successor on the Wii uh, is actually very, very similar. They're very similar box arts. And I like them both for the same reason. I, I like the, the actual art, the kind of art here on Sin and Punishment. I, I, I like that a lot. This is a little too basic for my taste, but there's this, this style looks really, really nice. So I think I prefer the Sin and Punishment or Secret of Evermore, but the, the themes, the what they were both going for, I think, are really great. Um, let's see here. I like I like Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. And and this goes in with just it's it's mostly just a logo, which I like a lot. But there's you can only really appreciate this box art in person because this lizard skin, this is actually this is actually textured. You can catch it in the light there. That's actually textured skin on the cover of Turok 2. So, I mean, I don't know if I'd call that interactive, but it's more than just the art itself. I mean, it's really uh, the box as a whole. I think that's really great. I love the cover of Yakuza 4. Like, if I could find a poster of just this cover without this the, the ESRB and then includes a bunch of DLC and say and all this other horse shit on the cover, I would definitely, I would actually frame and hang up a poster of this. I think this looks awesome. Um, I mean, it's it's your typical like here's a bunch of characters in the game, but um, I, you, you know the 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 just a handful of covers here, and the, you know Kamurocho nightlife in this sort of background in this splash going across the back. I think it I think it looks great. I think it 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 it, it just conveys a lot about the game without really having a whole lot there. I think that's awesome. Here we have uh, Jet Set Radio Future, which has a lot of, I mean, it's just beat. Oftentimes I really don't like game box arts. It's like, here's your character that's in the game. Like, that's so boring. Like, anybody can do that. You know, if you're an art director and you're like, here, just put the character on the front. It's so boring. Don't do that. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there's a lot of kinetic energy to this cover, which I think is great. Um, I think the European cover is the same thing, but the background is foil blue instead of foil red. And maybe it's a matter of grass being greener on the other side. Uh, I prefer the blue. It's a bit softer. I mean, the red is, is a bit too angry, and Jet Set Radio is not really an angry series. I don't, I don't think the red is so hot. The European cover is probably better. But I, I really like the, the sense of energy in this cover. This is Lady Stalker. On the Super Famicom, it's in the uh, Stalker series. So it's like Land Stalker on the Genesis and Time Stalkers on the Dreamcast. And um, this one, it's not so much the box art. I mean, the box art's fine. It's sort of inoffensive. But really what I like about this, and if you watch my videos, you'll, you'll know this because I mentioned this actually quite a bit. It's, it's really the logo, which is maybe cheating a little bit. I'll give you that. But this logo's terrific. Like, this, this sword in the high heel shoe... You know, it, it doesn't sexualize the heroine, it doesn't turn her into a gruff, like, I can be a man too kind of character. But it, it basically says, yeah, I'm a woman, but I will stab you in the fucking throat too. And I like that a lot, that's really cool. So, not so much the box art, but really just that logo. I think that logo is one of the most clever things I've ever seen in a video game, I like that a lot. Uh, here we have Homeland on the GameCube, this was only released in Japan. And I, you know, I really like this sort of uh, Dr. Seuss-esque kind of uh, landscape and the, the earth tone colors and these, these, you know, little children sort of exploring on the cover. Uh, m maybe I can't really articulate why I like this so much, but um, I think just everything comes together really nicely on this cover and I, I really like it. Uh, here we have the original Fable. And... You know, I'm not going to really... I mean, I love the Fable games. I know a lot of people don't. But um, this is more about the, the, the art than it is the games. But, you know, the Fable series I really enjoy because you're not you're not really making choices to really, like, completely customize the person you're playing as. You're sort of you're sort of guiding their Fable. You know, you, you, you have a hand in its formation. You're not really writing it. Um, the Fable's already there. You're just sort of filling in the details. And I really like this box. I really like the distinct Fable art and the really simple color scheme. And there's this idea that this small, innocent boy could become, you know, this, this evil man. You, you know, he sees in his reflection here. Uh, really like that. Uh, let's see. Here we have, this is uh, Final Fantasy 
of, of 14 and um, this was the original release, this is not Realm Reborn, this is the special edition uh, for the physical release and I really love this Amano art. Uh, again, just basic colors. It's, it's, it's busy, but there's just there's not a whole lot happening here. It's very simple, and I, I like it a lot. And of course, this is for the collector's edition only because, here, let me open this up, because the actual box art is flipping awful. Um, yeah, it's just that. And it's exactly what I said I don't like. It's just, here, here's a guy. <laughs> It's so boring, that's not artistic. And I actually, you know, I was reading articles about how uh, cover arts are sold in different regions. And in America, having like floating heads or having just some dude on the cover, whatever, that's what sells here. We want to see characters, whereas other regions like Europe wants to evoke a mood. So you can really contrast our box arts. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is a really good one. Here in the US, it's Leon Kennedy on the cover. And in uh, Europe, it's like woods. It's it just it's two colors and it's the woods. And uh, I'd rather have European box art sometimes. So um, these next few box arts are really more... I appreciate them because they're stupid. And I, to me, like sometimes just what people can get away with on their box art is hilarious. So first up, we have My Hero <laughs> on the Master System. And there's nothing... People were laughing about the um, the uh, reprint edition of Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow on the DS, which was a, a picture of a box art on the box art. That at least had art. This is literally some person holding the game card. This is like, here, this is what's inside the box. Like, there's nothing here. This, <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is absurd. <laughs> Uh, next up, this is a really famous box art. This is Phalanx on the Super Nintendo, and it's a shoot 'em up. And you really have the, you have this spaceship in the background, but in the foreground, what pe most people remember is this old old bearded guy playing the banjo. And I remember reading ab ab about this box art, and it was specifically designed to stand out in people's minds. Like this, this was designed to catch your attention and to stick with you. And obviously it did, because people still cite this as one of the worst box arts, but I think it's one of the best because it's so ridiculous. It's, it has nothing to do with anything. And you just couldn't get away, you can't get away with this today. This is totally a product of its time. And I love it for that. I love that it's just this distinct uh, Super Nintendo box art that has nothing to do with anything at all. And then we also have here um, Stellar 7, Draxon's Revenge. And I don't know, is this guy like, the Cobra Commander mixed with the Shredder. This is this is this is like this is basically like an, an early '90s cartoon show cover. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It reminds me of like the parody art for like Blood uh, Blood Dragon, Far Cry Blood Dragon. It's so stupid and ridiculous. And but at the same time, I I I, I kind of love it. And finally, I have two box arts here that I find really evocative, and um, just two of my favorite box arts of all time. Here we have Star Tropics on the NES, and uh, this I look at this and I, and I, I think of all like the strange areas and just the the sense of mystery uh, that uh, surrounds Star Tropics. I'll admit that there's a little bit of nostalgia and fuzzy childhood memories that go along with that, but there's no character here. There's nothing. It, it's a landscape, and. Um, you know, it just makes you wonder what's around the corner. What what secrets do these islands hold? And um, I, I like that a lot. And finally, we have here. Uh, this is um, this is a spinoff from the Shin Megami Tensei series. This is Majin Tensei Two: Spiral Nemesis. And actually, on the subject as a tangent, I love the name Spiral Nemesis. What the hell does that even mean? I love some of these Japanese names because they're ridiculous. But this one I find also evocative. Uh, you have one of the heroes on the cover here. Uh, with this city in the background and the sun, I don't know, rising or setting. And um, I just, I love the color. And I love uh, uh, just the sense of dread and mystery that goes into this box art. So there you have it, folks, some of my favorite box arts. Um, you're welcome to share some of your favorites in the comments, or even if you want to do a video response, I'd uh, be interested in seeing what you have to say. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got to see some art that you haven't seen before. Uh, and uh, until next time, you guys take it easy.